A colleague of mine asked a, a question that I think I could best explain by doing a little video and she asked um, how have you been <laughs> I've been watching some of your videos on Captivate and would like to ask you how do you zoom into specific areas um, she's been using the trial version of Captiva Captivate but I think she's gonna or she thinks she's gonna buy the full version uh, so Lois this is this is how I do that uh, when I start, um, well, let's close this project out here, and I just won't save that for a moment. So when I start to do one of these screen capture videos, I actually use Adobe Captivate to create my Adobe Captivate videos. And I choose Video Demo, and then, of course, I record whatever it is that I'm doing on, on the computer. Um, often I'm running two versions of Captivate. I use version 7 to do the recording of what I'm doing in Captivate 8. I hope that makes sense. So usually I start off a new video demo and it will prompt me for do I want to capture the whole screen or do I want to capture just a part of the screen. I usually capture the whole screen and I'll open up this example and I just, you know, have my microphone plugged in and I, uh, I, I go ahead and record uh, what it is and just talk into the microphone and end up with this little uh, CPVC file which is a Captiva Captivate uh, video project and of course it's captured the full screen here and you know if I go 100% you can see all the details of my Windows um, desktop and uh, but of course sometimes you know as I click on certain details I want to zoom in on those so what you can do is you can actually add some things to these videos once you've recorded them um, so I can just like play this here and then as I see fit I can just simply press a, a pan and zoom effect and let's just do one here for fun so you'll see this panel opening up on the side here and what I can do is I can uh, let's just do this let's say 150 and that zooms in and I can control where I'm looking at using um, just my mouse and dragging and dropping and you know if I want focus to be uh, in a particular area of the software I like about 150 you can go you can go more of course you can use the sliders and then you know if you're really trying to emphasize you know let's say the functions of in this case this video happens to be about Lightroom Adobe Lightroom um, you know if you're drawing attention to the drop-down menus you can zoom right in there and um, and then just continue to play from that point and then when you're finished drawing attention to this area you can click zoom out so when you play this back it creates an effect of zooming in and in a few moments time after you've finished there zooming back out and it records those and you can also do um, it can remove pop-ups from your your system tray uh, it allows you to do transitions and so forth and you have uh, the ability to add certain things as well so if I wanted to uh, there's been a few times where I've made some mistakes in my narration and rather than re-record the entire video I might just put in um, you know a, um, a smart shape like a rectangle here and then of course I can do all the things I'm going to have that appear on my timeline for say five seconds or ten seconds and I have all the controls that I would normally have and we'll just make a nice little purple box there and then let's just type something in oops I made a mistake so I'm going to correct it with a pop-up of my own 
design or something like that. And of course that font isn't really great. So let's just make it uh, white. Oops. Wrong box. Let's make it white. Uh, and then of course you can control the font size and all the things that you would normally do. So now what we have here is let's just make those margins a little larger. So when you play this back, we have the zoom in effect. And then a few seconds later, we zoom back out. And then you can have a little pop up say, oops, I made a mistake. So I'm going to correct it with a pop up of my own design. And then you can have that simply disappear. And that's pretty much it. And of course, when you publish these, what I do, of course, because I'm publishing them to YouTube, I click my file drop down menu and I publish to YouTube. And of course, if you have a YouTube account, uh, it'll publish the video and prompt you for, I'll hit cancel at this point, but it will prompt you for your login and password for your YouTube account. And you can give the, the, the video a title and a description and all that good stuff. And that's basically what I do. So hopefully that helps explain things, Lois, and everybody else who might be interested in uh, doing video demos.